Hello and welcome back to the three-part series on how to load data in and out of Snowflake's cloud data platform using FME. In this third and final video in the series, we'll be writing CSV data back to Snowflake. If you haven't seen the other two videos in the three-part series, make sure you check them through the links in the description box below. So let's get to it. Now that we've added the Snowflake reader onto our canvas, the next part of the demo is going to be writing some CSV data back to Snowflake. For demo purposes, I'm going to use the same CSV file I used in the first part, and I'm going to read in the CSV file and write it up to a different schema in the Snowflake database. So first I'm going to add in a reader. This time I'm going to go with a CSV file. And I'm going to select the file. And now I'm going to have a look to see that we've interpreted those files correctly. Now I can add it to the canvas. And the next one I want to do is Snowflake. So this time I'm going to grab the Snowflake writer and I'm going to choose a different connection. I'm going to use a different database and schema to write this customer sample data up to. We'll look at the parameters here. We'll see that we have this features per transaction that we write. We found that 100,000 features was a sweet spot. It seems like FME performs pretty well here. You can see you have your usual query timeout as well as your SQL statements that you can run before the reader operates on the Snowflake database. We're going to copy the attributes from the reader, and we'll just come in here and validate that the attributes are all green and connected up. For the CSV table, we'll call it customers. Now, I'm not putting a table qualifier in here because the database connection I've created already has a schema listed in there. In this case, it would just be test underscore DB, but I don't need to put that in there. Just like the other database writers that we have, you have the ability to control table handling. So in this case, I can create the table if needed using existing, drop and recreate, and truncate. In this case, I'm going to leave it as create if needed. I don't have a table there called that, but if I did, we would get an error and I would be able to run it again and drop that table. So now I'll click the run button. All right, looks like we've sent 150,000 features up there. So that's going to assume finish. And just like I did with the reading log file, I'll scroll up here to have a look to see what took place. I can see here that there's the create statement that went in and created against the database. Another useful string or log entry to look at is the connection string here. Now scroll over here and you can see that we've got the database test DB that it went against. And I had the test schema saved in that database connection file so it was loaded into the test schema. And there we go! We've successfully learned how to load data in and out of Snowflake's cloud data platform using FME. So what makes integrating FME and Snowflake so important? Well, FME adds value by allowing organizations to migrate data from over 450 sources onto the Snowflake platform via an ETL method. FME also allows organizations to integrate, convert, and cleanse datasets before they're uploaded to the Snowflake platform. The Snowflake Reader in FME allows organizations to easily connect and read datasets from their Snowflake databases, integrating and automating it with other datasets, systems, and applications. This utilizes Snowflake's ability to help prevent data silos by allowing everyone in an organization to access data from the same source through a multi-clustered shared data architecture. And that's it. Thanks for tuning into this how-to. And if you want to learn more about FME in general, you can check these tutorials right here. Thank you and see you in the next tutorial.